Hey, Scott, can you hear me? Yes, I can, but I do not have a video for you. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay, right, gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. Chair, can we do an audio check, please? Yes, here you go. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Chair, we can begin now. Thanks, uh, Scott. I hereby call this meeting of the Reapportionment Commission to order. It's uh, 1 o'clock, uh, 1 p.m. on February 23rd, 2022. This meeting is being conducted by video conference and telephone. I would like to remind the commissioners to please keep their cameras on for the duration of the meeting. Will the secretary please take the roll? Chair Muguishi. Present. Commissioner Chip Chase, excuse. Commissioner Chun, excuse. Commissioner Kennedy? Here. Here. <clears throat> Commissioner Nakota? Here. Commissioner Nishimura? Present. Commissioner Nanaka? Excuse. Commissioner Ono? Here. Commissioner Rathbun? Present. Chair, you have a quorum. Uh, thank you. Okay, so thank you, commissioners. Pursuant to Act 220, Session Laws of Hawaii 2021, you are required to disclose if anyone is present with you for this meeting. Commissioners, is anyone present with you for this meeting? My husband, who's my business partner, is sitting in the room. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll disclose, um, as per usual, my Assistant Vice President of Government and External Relations, Matt Sasaki, is in the room with me. Okay. Uh, additionally, pursuant to Act 220, we'll, we will be meeting remotely using interactive conference technology. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted on the Office of Elections website at elections.hawaii.gov shortly after the conclusion of this meeting. As a reminder to the public, your microphone will be muted until you are called upon. So we'll now move to agenda item three, which is public testimony. A list of testifiers who have submitted their names before the meeting has been added to the chat. As technical issues may arise, we will give each testifier a few moments to try and resolve any connection issues. 
However, if the issues cannot be resolved, we will have to move on to the next testifier. If you would like to testify, please click raise hand under reactions on Zoom. If you are joining us by phone, please press star nine. When recognized, please unmute your microphone before speaking. You may also turn on your video at this time. For the record, please state your first and last name and the items that you will be testifying on. For those testifiers joining us by phone, we will not have your name and we'll be identifying you by the last four digits of your phone number. To ensure that we will have sufficient time to hear all testimony, each testifier will have three minutes to testify. Once your time has expired, you will be asked to conclude your remarks. During public testimony, the commissioner will also be muted, but they may unmute themselves to ask questions. Will the secretary please announce the first testifier? First testifier is Lynn Mariano, followed by Kainoa Kamuhe Bavrebi. Okay, next testifier is Kainoa Kamuhi Ibarrego, followed by Jennifer Leinhart Tuji. Aloha, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission, Mahalo Nui. This is Kainoa Kamuhi Ibarrego testifying on behalf of Common Cause Hawaii. Um, we have submitted our written testimony, but just wanted to highlight uh, we have submitted a, a series of feedback and recommendations. Um, that we are respectfully requesting that the commission include in its final report to the Hawaii State Legislature. Uh, these recommendations are similar to testimony, um, the, similar to those proposed in the testimony we submitted on January 26th and January 28th. Um, so we hope they are in receipt of you and that you will consider putting them in your final report. Mahalo Nui. Okay, Chair, before we continue, I just would like to acknowledge that Commissioner Chief Chase has joined the meeting. Uh, next testifier is Jennifer Leinhart Suji, followed by Kimiona Kane. Um, Aloha, Chair. My video camera on. There we go. Aloha, Chair. And make it Mugishi. Also, commissioners and uh, fellow testifiers. Uh, my name is Jennifer Linhart Suji. I live in District 7, that's Waikoloa on the Big Island. Um, I have provided um, three different written testimonies throughout the um, meetings in 2022. Um, unfortunately, due to time restraints of the time of the meetings, um, they have not been conducive with um, a working individual, um, which is one of my concerns. But I'll start off with my particular district of Waikoloa. Um, the original plan that was uh, presented by the in the tech map, uh, I believe, had the district line running down the highway of Waikoloa. Um, in a previous session, um, I understand that it was said that any district that they, you might be able to work with district lines for people for um, if it's less than a 200 person deviance. Um, and I believe in the Waikoloa line that it needs to go back to the river being the district line rather than the highway being the district line. As is in December of 2020, um, the only residents living on that side of the high, on the other side of the highway that's being changed is um, a public housing division, which I believe are less than 200 individuals in that facility. Um, the reason I'm asking for this is because as in the tech plan, moving that boundary line to the highway will create all kinds of infrastructure issues and debates between two different districts, which puts us at an extreme disadvantage um, to getting anything accomplished. These are issues that have been long, uh, long acting and long debated within our community, um, and they need to be resolved within our community without the influence of outside um, communities such as Kona or Waimea. Uh, and so it is really important for our community to stay intact um, according to the um, Constitution. Um, and it is also really important that um, the Senate and House districts um, are complied with according to the Constitution. Um, in this session, I understand it's our last, uh, it's your last meeting. Um, I do have um, some suggestions for how the process can be improved. 
Um, I feel that because this is the second reapportionment meeting where there's conflict between um, uh, Big Island, Oahu district lines, um, who is seen as registered voters. Um, I believe that trust is at a point right now where it needs to be rebuilt. Um, I believe that the legislation needs to designate and um, review the designation and reapportionment process and commission members and how they're assigned. I believe that education need to be and further review comment um, by focus groups assigned to various different islands to give input to those legislators. Um, I believe that in the, in the in the past. The commissioners have not listened, heard, or responded appropriately. They have not pro provided dialogue, debate, or cooperation, or listened to any any reasonable um, resolutions provided. Um, I, and I believe that the commission has a responsibility to follow all constitutional criteria, including Article Four, Section Six, and they need to align the House and Senate districts as mandated to do so. Thank you. Next testifier is Kimio Nakane, followed by Maki Morinoi. Aloha Nui. Thank you so much, Scott. Uh, mahalo Nui for this opportunity. O Kimio Nakeia, the Waimanalo Mayao. I'm Kimio Nakane from Waimanalo. Um, here today on my, uh, as the chair of the Waimanalo Neighborhood Board, just to kind of reiterate some of the points of our learning over the last several months with this commission and this process, uh, as well as in my personal capacity. But first and foremost, commissioners, uh, Chair Mugish, we just want to say mahalo for your folks' time and efforts over the last several months. I, I know it has been a very trying task to try and make this work for the betterment of the communities that are um, impacted and uh, as well as the other expectations that you folks have. But um, I do want to reiterate the points that uh, we share as the Waimanalo Neighborhood Board, as a community, um, the need to bring the alignments back to Makapu'u a point for our Senate District, which is currently Senate District 25. Uh, we already see and, and have been dealing with some of the challenges that are um, facing when a community is being represented um, by an individual that has to spread out. And right now our Senate District is spread out across three different communities who are very, very different in their needs and their desires to uh, the community's evolution. <clears throat> so I do want to acknowledge that the House District was changed, so I want to mahalo. Uh, that discussion and the work that it took to put that into play. Um, the Senate district is something that we do want to work towards re, uh, reinstating as Makapu as the, the natural boundary. Um, as far as my own self, uh, Chair, I want to take the time to just, again, reiterate my appreciation to this commission. Um, I know it's been a very difficult task to take on all of our feedback and all of the concerns. And I think moving forward, what I really want to look at is this was my first reapportionment um, I, I will be back again in 10 years to make sure we, we kind of work again with uh, the, the situations that are brought before us. But I, I do want to highlight some of the things that I reflected on that I think may benefit all of us, uh, the public, as well as those that participate on the commission. Um, I think there is value in having the pig set up, but I don't know that the pig was utilized in the best way to really provide the community with the transparency that they were looking for. We know from the lack of testimony over the years, that there hasn't been a lot of input or a lot of effort put into really engaging with the communities. And so, you know, as a chair for my neighborhood board, I'm going to take that too hard and we're going to do our, our darndest to make sure in 10 years we're, we're ahead of the game. Um, so I think there's some value in, in being able to relook at, re-examine re how the pig is being used and, and really try to see if the information can be done in a more uh, transparent way. I know that the uh, data pooling was really interesting this year, and I'm kind of curious how we're going to avoid some of the, the fiascos that we went through this this time with uh, some of the data and census data. Um, so I'm kind of curious to see what the options are going to be for us in the future. And I think lastly, I, I was really most shockingly um, taken back by some of the influences of political in different areas. And so... I I really want to make sure that in the future that this is a very true transparent situation that's not being influenced by political gains because um, it's not about them. It's about the people that are being represented. And so uh, with that, I will mahalo uh, all of you folks and maybe next year we can use a different timer that's not so abrupt. Um, but mahalo chair, mahalo commissioners and the public for being here. Ahoy ho.
Okay, before we continue, I'd just like to acknowledge that Commissioner Nonaka has joined the meeting. Uh, next testifier is Marky Marinoi, followed by Kapo'ohu Lahaina Pamunis. Aloha, my name is Maki Morinoe. Um, I support what Kimio Nakane just said, and I won't go into too much detail, but I'm a Kama'aina here, and I had followed um, on the Big Island the Boya community map um, through testimony, through sitting in all the meetings. Um, I have addressed it with suggestions and response to both technical maps being out of line and separating communities. Um, I feel that our voices weren't addressed and our answers weren't fully answered completely. Um, so I would love to have clear, concise answers to a lot of our community concerns. Um, I, I also reflect with Kimiona, um, the feeling that it was politicized um, in the end, and that when we did come back to the table, that our testimonies and suggestions were not adjusted or addressed appropriately. Um, yes, so I don't wanna repeat what everybody says, but I hope to see a lot more collaboration moving forward for the next time. I feel like the platform was there, um, but it lacked follow through and a lot of detailed reasonings for why the technical map was solidified in that manner. Um, and I will continue to follow up and also be there in 10 years. Mahalo for your time. Thank you. Next testifier is Kapu Oho Lahaina Pamoni, followed by. Kapua Madero. Okay, moving on, next testifier is Kapua Madero, followed by Mary Smart. Aloha. Come on, me. All right, Aloha. Uh, I want to thank. First of all, thank you all for um, doing the work that you do. And uh, what I learned through the process, the entire process, looking back on all my old testimony, um, and it was it was a very big eye-opening process for me. I'm glad that um, through our Waimanalo Neighborhood Board that we had amazing leadership uh, of Kimiona Kane to help us to get involved and stay involved in this entire process. Um, I feel that the most important suggestions that I could offer um, is that number one, continue to ensure that the people's voices are being heard. Um, at, there were many times during their process that I felt our voices weren't being heard uh, because of the fact that um, many community members came together um, around our our island and our state to share their suggestions. And I felt that not enough time was spent looking at their suggestions. Um, I've, I had a problem understanding why new maps could not be uh, drawn up when uh, mere community members were able to draw maps overnight. And yet uh, a city entity like this, um, made excuses, or I felt that made excuses, though I'm sure that your work is very important, that it was not able to be done. And so um, in the future, as Kimiona stated and others, I intend to be here in the next 10 years to also um, kokua my, uh, my mana'o and help our community to ensure that we um, have a say and a voice in this process. So I mahalo you again uh, for restoring our Makapu'u boundary in our House District 51. I'm sad that we weren't able to do the same for our Senate District. Um, and I'm looking forward to, um, to seeing that through, that process through. Um, just remember, and I hope that you all take it to heart, that when a community 
spends the time and effort to come to these meetings. And it's very, um, it takes a toll on us. This is my second long meeting of the day. Um, and so I want you to know that when we do this, we're not doing it because uh, we just wanna grumble. We're doing it because we take a stance in our community to stand up for what is Pono. So thank you again, all of you. And I really appreciate having this extra time to look over what took place. And thank you for the learning that I received. Mahalo, aloha. Testifier is Mary aloha. Smart followed by Bill Hicks. Aloha. Next, next testifier is Bill Hicks followed by Mishaela Ikeuchi. Hello, Chair. I'm Bill Hicks. I'd like to offer some observations and recommendations for future improvements to the process. Uh, number one, uh, be open and transparent. The technical committee probably performed 95% of the work of this commission. There is almost no sunshine on what the committee considered or rejected or why. I understand in the previous commission, the committee's meetings were open. This cycle, everyone was left to guess what the committee was thinking. And I believe that doubt even extended to some of the other five commissioners. Why did the committee propose wrapping House District 51 around Makapu'u Point in the first place? Why was it kept that way in December's plan despite a mountain of testimony rejecting the idea? When a perfect opportunity arose to align all 51 House Districts wholly within a Senate District as the Constitution calls for, why was there no effort to do so? When I appealed at three different meetings for a side-by-side -side comparison of the Oahu Senate plan that used your own house districts to form districts in compliance with the constitution, compared with the committee's plan that was non-compliant, why did that never happen? Where was the intellectual curiosity? Uh, do you realize that the whole commission was never once provided with an option on legislative districting? Wrap, wrap around Makapu or not? Pros and cons, split Manoa Valley, make Milani Town an attack district, comply with the constitution. Debate it in the open, ask questions, listen to the people. Except for Commissioner Kennedy, this never really happened. All anyone, including other commissioners ever got was a 20 minute brief, then accept the technical committee's plan up or down. Virtually no discussion was ever offered about the trade-offs considered and reasons why. The only time the whole commission was ever provided an option was on the congressional plan, never on the legislative plan. Number two, welcome public input. It's not a good sign when a testifier is muted in mid-sentence at the three minute mark when there are only four testifiers and the entire public hearing is wrapped up in 18 minutes to everyone's relief because it had to go for at least 15 minutes. That gives the impression that you're only going through the motions, checking off a box and what the people are trying to convey doesn't really matter. Three, Deliberately involve neighborhood boards. A previous commission found this helpful to increase participation. This time, 11 neighborhood boards representing 300,000 Oahu residents considered your plans and rejected them. They had worthwhile ideas to offer. Uh, they did not deserve your ridicule. Uh, number four, follow the recipe. Using all con constitutional and HRS criteria, build an order. One, house districts, two, Senate districts using exactly two house districts if there are an even amount, and three uh, congressional districts last, using house districts as building blocks. Try that first. Then if there's some compelling reason to deviate, debate it, but understand it first. And lastly, uh, five, every commissioner should independently build a map to become familiar with the process and the challenges. I'll wrap up, I'll wrap up quickly. Uh, get your hands a little dirty and be an active participant and not just accept without question or real understanding the work of others. I hope that these recommendations are seriously considered the next time. Mahalo. Next testifier is Michelle Ikeuchi, followed by Deborah Ward. Hi, everyone. My name is Michaela. I live in Keoho on the Big Island. I am native Hawaiian and I'm deeply concerned about the reapportionment map, as many other citizens are. The map made no sense and follows no logic. 
It groups rural areas with high native Hawaiian populations with larger towns with less Hawaiians and a very dense population of people. Based on simple mathematics, this means that the voices of the people in rural areas will be drowned out by the towns. Essentially, as a result, Hawaiian voices will once again be silenced by our government, this time wrapped in the nice little legal package of reapportionment. I am sick of the people of Hawaii being treated like they are too unintelligent to notice how these poor decisions will influence us for the next 10 years. My family comes from an area called Hunaunau. They are Hawaiian farmers and fishermen. They have different lifestyles, needs, and perspectives than those in the heart of Kailua Kona, in the heart of town. The development heavy mindset of Kailua Kona will trickle south and then what will be left of our agriculture, including the famous two mile by five mile stretch known as the Kona Coffee Belt, which is responsible for many, many families' livelihoods. Most of the homes along the Kona coast in town are vacation rentals and are left empty by non-residents or part-term residents. This means that wealthy townspeople who barely contribute to our community will be making decisions for the people whose families have lived on this island for thousands of years. Owe no ho'ie, never. What is possibly most upsetting is that citizens from all walks of life, all backgrounds have stepped up to say that this reapportionment was wrong and we were all silenced. The democratic process was completely undermined. What is the point of having a democracy if the people's words and concerns are meaningless? With the corruption circling around our government, I sincerely hope this was a simple oversight and not a clue into ulterior motives or unethical practices. Either way, our people are aware. This process was unconstitutional and it feels slightly silly to say what's blaringly obvious, but in the future, we need to follow the constitutional criteria moving forward. Thank you. Next testifier is Deborah Ward, followed by Marion Gray. Good afternoon, my name is Deborah Ward. I'm very much involved in our community, having chaired Sierra Club for the island for several years and representing the Puna District for the County of Hawaii Public Access, Open Space and Natural Resources Commission. I live and farm in Upper Puna and I've been a registered voter since 1967 and I began actively working on campaigns at that time. I'm an ardent advocate of democracy, not an opponent. Um, I stand on my uh, written testimony, which I submitted on time, but I would like to say once more that the proposed District 5 that I reside in makes the least sense of any of the proposed districts in that it is larger than two islands combined. Within it reside some of the wealthiest people in the world and some of the most impoverished people in our state, including a large group of Micronesians who are currently not supported by the way our systems work. And literally half the residents relate to Hilo for commerce and government, while the other half relate to Kona for the same circumstances, all in a district you have lumped together. Our district needs better governments, governance and coordination, and this accomplishes exactly the opposite. I ask you again how you crafted this plan and how you and I ask you what your criteria were for doing so. It does not meet the constitutional criteria. And I urge you to pause this process, return to review the testimonies, revise your maps, look at the community maps and consider them seriously instead of calling us opponents and ridiculing our efforts. This is worthwhile work that we have done and we feel that you should consider what we've said. Thank you very much. Next testifier is Marion Gray, followed by Kapohua Lahaina Pamuni. Thank you so much. I want to uh, thank all of those that worked hard on this effort, uh, especially Bill Hicks from Kailua. And I want to say a big thank you to those neighboring residents that live in Waimanalo. I'm in Hawaii Kai, but 10 years ago, parts of Hawaii Kai were taken and put into District uh, 51 with the, with the house districts. Uh, it was a problem then, and it continued to be a problem until somebody finally listened to some of the people and brought us back to where the division should lie. Uh, and I don't know on what basis that was done, but I say congratulations for having done it. But why on earth did you still leave the Senate districts split in that awful method? So I'm primarily 
complaining about what has been done to the Senate districts. Uh, I can only complain about the area that I know the best, and that is East Oahu. Uh, I'm sure there were problems throughout the whole state, but why don't you listen to the good suggestions and maps drawn by Bill Hicks? With that, I will say thank you for listening and please rethink your plan. Thank you. Next sector fires, Kapohu o Lahaina Pamonis, followed by Brett Kobus. Aloha and um, thank you for the opportunity to speak on this. I wanna mahalo of, um, all of you for your work, especially changing our house district as we requested. I am disappointed as you know, even the testimony, testimony given by um, the person ahead of me about the Senator, the Senate District 25 um, realignment back to the Makapu'u boundary. I'm also disappointed in hearing, you know, some of the voices that were made in these meetings about the politicized pressures that were used. And that needs to be addressed because yes, doing such does not follow the order of the law. And we've seen, um, many um, breakdowns of that during this process. Also, even though the, um, the volunteerism of this is you know, applauded, I think even on the selection, you need to look at individuals who have real estate ties in their business because that interest becomes you know, um, self-interest and that shouldn't really be a part of this whole process. I think that needs to be looked at because when you have an individual uh, making statements about the people who are participating, the residents as you know, uh, being dismissive to what they are saying, that does not represent fair representation. So those things um, happening were not very easy for us as you know, residents who care about a community, especially with me, I sit on several subcommittees and it makes you wonder why those comments were even made. So um, again, mahalo for your time. I think uh, hopefully you've all learned that even as the process now to me sits in uh, a challenge as to whether everything was being done by the law. And that's what you are all here to do. And when you look at the daily news and all the corruption being surfaced, take a look at the personal liability when you step in and you make a commitment to represent what the law states for the people, not the profit over the people or the politicizing over the people. Mahalo for your time. Next testifier is Bert Kobus, followed by Shannon Matson. Hello, I'm Chair Mugishi, members of the commission. Uh, thank you for everything you guys have done over the past several, or over the past year, I guess it's been. Uh, I know it's a hard job to uh, do this, get pulled and pushed for from every direction, but I, I, will, I will give you credit. Uh, I, I, I commend, uh, I noticed that there's a bill in, Senate bill, SB 35, uh, 3254, uh, changing the, for a constitutional amendment to specify the reapportionment shall be based on resident population. I think that will uh, alleviate some of the problems and, and uh, you know, give, give uh, uh, you know, our military members that have, re that have decided to reside here uh, actual, you uh, uh, to be counted in the the next reapportionment, I'll be uh, definitely supporting that bill. Uh, all that you, you have done. Like we're having technical difficulty. Yeah, I was gonna say I think he's frozen. 
Moving on, next testifier, Shane Matson, followed by Kapua, Kaylee Ikoa Kamai. Aloha, staff um, and commissioners. Um, this is Shannon Matson for the record. Uh, I wanted to take a moment to mahalo um, the staff and Commissioner Kennedy in particular. Um, after witnessing this process from the start, I feel that they truly had the community's best interest in mind and listened to public testimony and responded. And while I appreciate the time uh, that the rest of you sacrificed as well, I'm, I'm still severely disappointed in the ultimate outcome. I'm not going to spend time talking about that. I'm going to, uh, because I know that's a done deal at this point. Instead, I'm going to um, urge you for next time uh, to put into the record to uh, talk to your whoever may <laughs> be willing to take on this position in the future. Um, if any of you decide to continue on in this role or um, to your predecessors, uh, that please follow the constitutional criteria to the letter. Uh, please. I think that that would have alleviated a lot of the issues here. Um, I want to encourage that you really follow the sunshine laws and, and don't have a permitted interaction group, um, whether that was to the law of the sunshine, to the letter of the sunshine law or not. Um, I would encourage you to not uh, take that process in developing these maps and, and go for total transparency. Um, I'd also like to say I support the rules for commissioners as suggested by Common Cause Hawaii. Um, that there should be some guidelines, some rules, especially if issues come up, uh, that you can use those rules to, to address um, whatever comes up in the future. Um, I also would strongly encourage, uh, I don't know whether it's a rumor or not, but I've heard that um, many of you either knew the home addresses of legislators or even that that was something that was put into some of the maps that you were working on. Um, and I would strongly discourage that from happening in the future. And the last thing is that our county um, redistricting commission was able to come up with a list of the irregular census blocks. And they're going to be submitting that at the federal level, is my understanding, to help future redistricting commissions. And I would really encourage you, um, maybe it was in there, I looked through most of that 900 page report, but um, had some technical issues, so I couldn't see the whole thing. Uh, but if it's not, I would really strongly urge either the staff to put something together or you guys to put something together so that um, in the future, uh, the, those irregular census blocks can either be amended um, or, or fixed in some way. Anyway, that's all I have. Thank you all so much again for your, for your time and service. Even if we didn't agree, I know that you sacrificed a lot to, to do this work and um, I wish you all the best. Aloha. Next testifier is Kapua Kelee Koa Kamai, followed by Phil Barnes. Aloha kako, o wau Kapua Kelee Koa Kamai, no ka aina ho o pula pula ka awawa waianai mai au. Mahalo for all of your work. I'm going to ask you up front to please forgive me for uh, any ignorance that I have on how this process actually works, as this is the first time I'm engaging. Uh, previous attempts were just looking at your maps. So like Kekoa and some of our other Waimanalo residents have mentioned, thank you for keeping Waimanalo district in Waimanalo and not wrapping around to Hawaii Kai. And I believe Hawaii Kai people would also have the similar sentiment. And I uh, repeat what they shared about their Senate. It's unfortunate that that did not uh, transfer or get realigned as well. I do want to thank you for my district 45, which is Waianae, and for bringing it back to Waianae to a more reasonable line. Because the previous map that I observed back in December was just moving it a little bit here and there, which didn't make much sense. But the map that I'm seeing today looks pretty reasonable to me. And I'll add that sentiment to District 44, and especially 43 and 42, for keeping Wyoming, Makakilo and Kapolei more together than what they were previously. Um, I don't speak for those people, but from my um, this surface view, it looks like a better alignment for them as far as the house goes. Now, as far as my Senate goes, again, 
I uh, appreciate that we do, well, let me stick to the house. So just to say that back in 2010, we were District 45. Since then, 2012, we became District 44. And so now we're going back to District 45 as a house uh, again. So believing that that's you know, the proper way that we do it, I'm gonna thank you for getting us to 45 again. Um, as far as our Senate, as I mentioned previously, um, thank you for bringing that in as well. So I'll just keep mine short. Thank you so much for your time, especially thank you for your service. I ask you to listen and consider all of those more learned uh, testimonies that you have already heard and that has been provided in writing. Mahalo nui. Next testifier is Phil Barnes. Aloha everyone. Uh, just a couple of short points here. Uh, Bill Hicks actually pretty much succinctly listed many of the things I'm thinking about right now. Uh, I live in Hawaii Island in Hilo. Uh, about three blocks from the downtown post office. Unfortunately, you placed me in a district that runs all the way to Honoka'a through all of the rural uh, Hamakua area, which is unfortunate. Uh, another thing I'd like to say is that if you're gonna have a democracy, which we supposedly do, you know, a republic, uh, it requires sunshine, it requires transparency, and it requires listening to the input of the citizens uh, that, that you seek at these hearings, uh, which I can't say I've seen a lot of that happening up this point. And the last thing is, I know we're getting short on time in terms of uh, candidates, you know, lining up to run for office and that. And I would say at least here on Hawaii Island, uh, an excellent map has been created by Ralph Boyer and a, and a group of citizens working with him. And the primary thing is here on Hawaii Island, we have eight house districts and four Senate districts. So it doesn't take rocket science to redraw these districts and keep them within Senate districts. I'm in the Senate district of Hilo, but in the house district of Hamakua. Uh, so if you just follow the constitution, uh, then my problem would be resolved. Thank you. Okay, next testifier is Brett Colbis. One second. Thank, thank you. I think I had some technical oh. difficulties. Can you hear me now? Yes, you may continue. All right, thank you. I just wanted to thank uh, the chair and the board for, for all their efforts over the past year. Uh, I know it's hard and you're getting pulled in a lot of directions and a lot of uh, uh, comments uh, on how you guys should be doing your business. Business, but I appreciate everything that you've done. I also appreciate that it looks like the uh, legislature has taken up some of your concerns and it looks like SB 3254 will alleviate the permanent resident and just make it resident uh, based on the census, which I think will go a long way to, to uh, uh, help helping some of those in the military that uh, felt they're not being heard because of this, because they're being he uh, extricated out of the out of the total. So mahalo for everything you do. Mahalo. Next testifier is Michael Konowitz. Aloha, commissioners. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Uh, first, I want to thank the commissioners for all their time. I know uh, being a commissioner myself on on another initiative. Uh, it, it takes a lot out of you, so I appreciate that. Uh, however, um, I am disappointed by the output of, of this commission, and it's one thing to be disappointed in the output, but I'm really disappointed by the process. From my view, the commission was more committed to that final deadline than they were to the Constitution. And hiding discussion and debate and technical reports away from the public, I feel... Um, does a tremendous disservice to our community, uh, not to mention um, 
Ray Sunshine Law concerns. I fear overall that the process that was followed sets us up for unnecessary legal challenges, legal expenses, and delays. And I believe future commissions need to be much more aware of such unintended consequences before the plan is finalized. Mahalo. Chair, are there no further testifiers? Thank you. Um, this being what I anticipate to be our last commission meeting, I just wanna thank all the members of the public who have come out um, regularly and with great enthusiasm to testify and share their positions. Um, I do wanna make the statement that um, listening and hearing is not the same as agreeing. So, you know, we, we, have, we have heard you, we've listened to you, um, we've taken all the input and we haven't always agreed. And that's, uh, you know, that's just the way the democratic process works as all of you know. So um, just, but again, we do appreciate all of the dedication that all the testifiers expressed and, de and demonstrated by coming week after week during this process. So with that, we'll move on to agenda item four, reports by the apportionment advisory councils. We have invited each advisory council, Hawaii, Maui, Kauai, and Oahu to provide feedback on matters affecting redistricting for each basic island unit. We have planned to allow each advisory council to present at our commission meetings. Is there any advisory council that would like to present? Okay, uh, if not, we'll move on to the next agenda item. Item five, approval of the minutes for the meeting of January 28th, 2022. Including, included in the meeting packet were the minutes of the January 28th 2022 meeting. Is there any discussion on these minutes? If not, is there a motion? Chair, I move to approve. I'll second it. Okay, motion by Commissioner Ono, second by Commissioner Nakota. Any further discussion? If not, Mr. Secretary, can you take the vote, please? Commissioner Chip Chase? Aye. Commissioner Chun? Excuse, Commissioner Kennedy? Aye. Commissioner Nakota? Aye. Commissioner Nishimura? Aye. Commissioner Nanaka? Aye. Commissioner Ono? Aye. Commissioner Rathbun? Aye. Chair Mugushi? Aye. Chair, the motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. We'll continue now to the next agenda item. Agenda item six. Discussion and action on the 2021 Reapportionment Commission's report to the legislature. The purpose of this agenda item is to discuss the draft of the report, which was included in today's meeting packet, and to consider any edits or recommendations the commission would like to make. So you all got to see it. Uh, thank you very much to the staff for putting together a comprehensive uh, report that chronicled our journey. Um, and uh, now I would like to open it to the commissioners for anything they'd like to discuss or add. I also did want to point out that um, in, in the packet or and shared was uh, the testimony by the staff in, in response to the the proposed bill um, in the Senate for the constitutional amendment. Um, and I think that testimony reflected a lot of the frustration that many commissioners expressed during the, during the course of our, uh, our deliberations about how we're dependent on multiple different data sources um, that are created for very different reasons uh, to try and come to an outcome. So without passing any judgment on whether or not uh, the staff was for or against that, uh, that bill. Um, uh, he did, uh, David Rosenbrock did bring up the struggles that we had using those different data sets and how that will continue uh, into the future without any change. Commissioner Rathbun, I see you have your hand up. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I'd just like to say the report, I think it's well written. Uh, my personal comments are uh, we, we we had a lot of people that would express not being able to get to the meetings during the uh, normal work business days. If we could uh, 
stress that maybe a little bit more evening time or even Saturday time for those folks to uh, have the opportunity not to have to take off uh, personal time off to be part of the process. And then uh, I certainly support the not uh, extracting anybody. If they're here and they're counted, then we should go with those numbers uh, for future uh, um, commissions. Thank you. Thank you. I, I heard two recommendations from Commissioner Rathbun that um, I'd like to open for discussion here so that we can decide if we want to uh, take a vote about whether we want to include that as a recommendation. The first point was whether or not meeting times uh, for commission meetings and public hearings uh, should uh, be adjusted to account for different people's work schedules. Well, Chair, do you need a motion for that? No, just for some discussion first, I think, um, and then we can decide if we want to vote on it. Commissioner Ono, I see you have your hand up. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with Kevin, um, with Commissioner Rathbun in that, um, you know, especially, well, either, even if we're in person um, or um, virtually, I think, it would be really good to make um, an effort to have the meetings start at say four o'clock or five o'clock each day or, or have them be evening meetings um, or even Saturdays. So um, I, I, I do think that will help public access. Um, the other thing I saw in, the, in last time's recommendation, you know, the cumbersome process of of um, the staff taking around the maps as they've been physical copies of these maps to all these libraries. And um, if that's being done, I would hope we could somehow streamline that process so that they, you know, with the computers that are available, that people could be assisted to get on Esri and actually view the maps because there's so many versions of them that it's just a waste of, of paper. Those maps are huge when they're reproduced. I, I, I saw one from um, Mr. Rosenbrock and it, it was like this massive thing and they had so many you know, pages of it. Seems like such a waste. Thank you, Commissioner Ono. We'll, we'll take up that, that third recommendation you have um, after we go through these others. Um, but but we can go through this process if if you would like to um, create you know express an opinion or discuss the first one and add another one I'll just keep track of it and we'll make sure we we discuss all of them. Um, any other commissioner have a comment on the uh, the time of the meetings or any other thing that they they'd like added on for us to consider? If we're I, I chair, oh, go ahead, Robin. No, I'm sorry, chair. Go ahead. I can wait. I, I uh, appreciate the opportunity. I'm glad you brought us back together to sort of do this, these comments um, after our work was done. And I, I appreciate the public that came out again, too. I, the meeting time is difficult for me. Most public boards and commissions do meet during the day, or many of them do. And, and that's just sort of how the business is conducted. I actually think we did a pretty good job, uh, particularly in the outreach period of our, of our work, uh, scheduling meetings on Saturday and scheduling meetings in the evening. But even with those feelings, I'm, I'm certainly not opposed to trying to do better and to encouraging the next iteration of the commission to meet in the evenings or on weekends if, if uh, that can be done in a, in a more uh, aggressive way. Uh, I definitely su support uh, Kevin's other comments and um, uh, you know uh, 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 endorse them as my own and would, would support uh, a recommendation from this commission along those lines. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner Chief Chase. Commissioner Kennedy, you had something you wanted to say as well. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I, I misunderstood what the request was initially, but I completely agree with um, Commissioner Rathburn's uh, suggestions. But I also heard one that I thought was very important from Bill Hicks. Uh, and being on the rules committee versus the technical committee, I really felt like I was 
I mean, I don't know how the other commissioners feel that we're not on the technical, but we didn't really have a lot of available input outside of this type of forum. So that PIG, that permanent, you know, permitted interaction group, I'm not sure that that is the best way to go either. I feel like at least it should be transparent where we all have the opportunity because I feel like there's a lot of animosity and a lot of um, people frustrated and disappointed in the outcome, but I know the other four commissioners that were on the technical did the best that they possibly felt they could. They worked many hours. They worked nights and weekends when they weren't sitting here with all of us on four hour meetings. They were having their own four hour meetings or however long it took to do whatever it was that they did. So it's easy to, you know, blame or target the four that worked on it. But again, at the end of the day, I feel like that permitted interaction group allowed for that scenario. It wasn't something that they asked for. So I think that is a big consideration for the future for sure. And then the thing that Kevin said about, I mean, the military lives here. I work 12 years with PACOM. They use our roads. They use our schools. They shop in our grocery stores. They live here. So where their taxes are taken out should not be relevant to where their physical address is. So I feel like that is one of the biggest considerations that should be um, drawn because it would make this whole job a lot easier if we weren't trying to figure out how many military we needed to extract, right? So uh, those are my two cents. And again, just want to thank the community for all of the effort and time that they spent building those maps and carrying them around. I've seen Kimiona carrying those around too. So it is crazy. Um, but thank you for hearing. Okay. Me. Yeah. Thanks, Commissioner Kennedy. We'll 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 take up the item, the additional item you brought up about the permitted interaction group in, in order after we go through these others. Um, anything else from the commissioners before we consider the first one about meeting times? Okay, if not, I heard um, a recommendation that we uh, consider putting in the final report a recommendation that consideration be given toward uh, more, more attention paid towards some meeting times trying to be sensitive to Commissioner Chip Chase's thing, that we just uh, accommodate as much as possible uh, working schedules of the public in creating the meeting time schedule. So it's not fixed at a time, but that we try and accommodate as much as possible. And if that's kind of what everyone uh, heard as well, if I could get a motion to that effect. I'll make a motion, Chair. Motion by Commissioner Rath. Okay. The second was from who? Sorry. Commissioner Chip. Chip. Got it. Any further discussion? And we'll have the staff will will wordsmith it um, in a way that reflects this discussion, I think. <laughs> um, all in favor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and all in favor for this, just say aye. 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 Anybody, anybody opposed? Okay, great. So that was unanimous. Uh, the second item I heard was endorsing the concept of uh, what's essentially in the current Senate bill that we do not engage in an extraction process of non-permanent residents, that there be a constitutional amendment that we recommend there be a constitutional amendment that does not require that. So any further discussion on that issue? This is Cal. I, I would just say, I thought Robin's comments on that were, were very good. We spend a lot of time on that and Dylan and I went through it 10 years ago, trying to do the right thing and trying to do it the right way um, in a way that is faithful to the constitution, but also balances the different numbers that were given and the different parameters that were offered. And I don't think there's a perfect way to do it. I, I will say that you know, a number of the commissioners expressed grave reluctance in removing folks from this count who obviously are part of our communities and affect our services. And yet we still did it because that's what the law required us to do. And I think we were faithful to that because the law requires us and to all the other decisions that we made. And so if the next commission is, it has the same burdens, I'm sure they'll be faithful to it to the best they can. But I do think given the way the numbers are given to us, the practical difficulties, as well as really um, the underlying justifications for including all the folks who live here as part of the, the numbers that we use uh, do call for some revisions to our constitution. And, and I will strongly support uh, such a recommendation. 
Thanks. Commissioner Nishimura, you have your hand up. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, while I'm voting in favor of the recommend recommendation, my concern is whether that will um, carry over to uh, passage on a constitutional uh, change. And perhaps um, as an alternative, um, that we also provide another recommendation uh, in the event that the, that it does not pass, that um, they codify some method of extraction prior to the next reapportionment commission. And, and I'll, I'll leave it at that for now so that we can vote on the motion. Commissioner Ono. Yeah, I, I don't think I can agree with, um, you know, not extracting at all. And the reason, my reasoning is right now, um, you know, I would consider the military people who are here part of our community in the sense that they use our roads and, you know, what everyone has said. But um, I could also envision a Vietnam War scenario where people are military are coming and going pretty quickly in and out of, of the state and in large numbers. And I'm not sure that we would want to count all of those people, um, you know, in the Schofield area or in um, the Kaneohe Marine Base area um, as part of the population there. So, um, yeah, that's my reservation with this. And um, I, I agree with Commissioner Nishimura that, you know, some, some kind of methodology or, you know, clear way that these extractions, particularly of the military are to be done, should be um, set forth in, in, you know, statute um, or in rules and regulations or something so that future commissions have much better guidance. Chair, can I ask a question? I'm wondering, could it be managed through the census? I mean, if they did the census correctly, right? Maybe there could be questions on the census that could help us with this. Yeah, right? I mean, I'm, just, I'm, I'm sure if the census was willing to adjust their census to do that, they could help us. But my guess is they won't since we're the only state left that has this requirement. So I don't think they're gonna change the way they run a census for all 50 states if only one state is saying we need this information. No, I'm assuming that they maybe could just do it in Hawaii, like have a you know specific questions for Hawaii versus the mainland. I mean I don't want to speak for the US census, but I would my just guess is that they would not be receptive to that. I would just guess that. Um but I'm, what I'm hearing is this, and tell me if this is uh, something that, because we're, what we're really voting on is what we're gonna put in the report, right? So what, what do we wanna say in the report? And what I'm hearing is that the commissioners were unanimous in their frustration that the, the current way that we use data to extract um, non-permanent residents is, um, is flawed and, uh, and, and, and will lead to controversy and, and difficulty in getting accurate numbers. The commissioners were divided in whether or not the best solution to this was to not have uh, any extraction at all or whether it should be uh, codified in statute as to how this should be done. And then just leave it at that as our recommendation so that we're stating that one or the other thing should happen to help us. I'm fine with that, Chair. Others? I think that makes sense. We should strive to be unanimous. I support the idea of having a clear criteria that we use in order to do the extraction. So it's codified by law that, you know, we take people that are residents for less than two years or something like that, where there's a, there's a clear criteria that we can give the sources that are providing us this data um, that they can pull the extraction based on. And so it's not changing every 10 years um, or up, up for interpretation. The way it is now, we have to err on the side of caution and do the maximum 
extraction, which we, I think, all unanimously agree is too many. Um, so, yeah, some more specific guidance would be helpful. I have to agree, and, and um, what Dylan just said and what Diane said is, you know, go back to the Constitution. I don't know when this was put into the Constitution, but it could have been back to the Vietnam War, or, you know, where we had people coming and going constantly. And that might be why it's there. That might be why it's there. Yeah, so if it's, um, I think if it's okay with the group, I would entertain a motion uh, to, you know, and, and we'll, I'll work with the staff and I'm sure the staff is listening to this as well as um, the attorney general's office so they can help with the correct language. But basically what we're gonna say is that we, we recommend that uh, the process to extract be much, be better, right? Like that the tools are better and that it's either the commissioners were divided, whether that means you know, you, uh, you don't extract at all. You, there's a constitutional amendment, or if not, that there is um, a law that codifies how you do it. Yeah, whose job would it be to create the law? The, the legislature. Legislature. Right, yeah. but so they would have an understanding of what it would take. I mean, sh like, do we even have a suggestion yeah. on how to do it better? I mean, this I is, we're making a recommendation that they look into it. I don't think we're going to be able to tell them what they should put in their bill because it's going to depend on, you know, what, what they want actually extracted, right? If it's like Dylan said, is it going to be based on how, how long people have lived here? Um, are, are they going to try and include people who are permanent residents here who are living on the mainland at the time? Like we talked about all of these things that we weren't sure what to do. I think the legislature will have to decide who they actually want to count. Here, I have a, another suggestion that might help with it is to maybe uh, have the legislature form a process action group to make recommendations on how to do it and not just, you know, us going, you know, post commission stuff saying, oh, well, but. You know, we got three sets of numbers and they're all different. I, I, I'm confident if we asked for a fourth set, it would be the same. I mean, a different, I mean, we wouldn't get the same. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think uh, it does need to be looked at. And if we pass it off to the ledge, we might not like what they do. Uh, but if we could get it some, you know, public involvement uh, and, and take a look at it that way might be something we could suggest. Well, actually, they might not have to do uh, constitutional convention. They haven't done that for many, many years. And that's where the Constitution changed. So that might be something that could be in the work. I agree. Yeah. And again, they're currently, they currently are looking at a law that would require this constitutional amendment. And we don't know if it's going to pass or not. So our, again, our recommendations may or may not have meaning, depending on whether or not that passes or not, but I, I just want to make sure that I capture what we're saying. And basically what I hear us saying is something got to be fixed, right? right. The, 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 the data is not, we can't work with this data in, and do what we've been asked to do. And we want to make sure that the next commission doesn't have the same issue. And, and, and the only way I can, because we all disagree a little bit about how we do it, the only way we're going to put something in the recommendation that um, that uh, that I think will be meaningful is to say that we think the legislature has to address it in some way, whether it's with a constitutional amendment or co codifying it in law. But uh, I, I don't see any other way that our recommendation would have any meaning other than saying that. I think, I think Kevin brings up a good point though that um, maybe the recommendation needs to be that we recommend that there's a study group or something formed to look at it because really a law is not going to make any sense if the stakeholders and the folks that we're getting the data from aren't consulted because if we say hey we're going to base it on this criteria but it's not something that the that the data source can provide us then, then we're kind of back to square one so it may be something that takes a little bit deeper dive into the different sources that we're getting data from what is their capabilities to provide us information based on different criteria and then come up with an intelligent piece of legislation that can actually be implemented 
as opposed to something that um you know make may sound good but we can't actually do or get the get the correct information from the sources that are going to be providing it okay so can we add a a, a third a third thing to the thing so constitutional amendment or a law that codifies it legislation that codifies it or a legislated study group that looks at the best way to address this problem and just say the commissioners were divided on those three but that we hope one of those things happens makes sense do that something sense. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay so is there a motion for for that and uh david i hope you were listening <laughs> 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 or Scott. Yeah. I, I, I'll make a motion uh, that we submit the three uh, recommendations we've just discussed. Okay, thank you. I'll second it. Okay, motion by Commissioner Rathbone, second by Commissioner Nakota. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, unanimous. The third suggestion I heard was whether or not there was some way that we could adjust the requirement that physical maps be posted at physical locations so that uh, you know it's it's not so burdensome to staff to lug all the versions of maps around and trying to put them up. Any discussion on that concept? Let's say I can share with the recommendation to uh, and process and make it more digital. Any other discussion? Okay, if not, is there a motion that we put that in the recommendations? So moved. Second. Okay, motion by Commissioner Nonaka, second by Commissioner Nishimura. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, unanimous. All right, now the fourth um, question about the role of the permitted interaction group. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the pros and cons, the, the pros of a permitted inter interaction group obviously are that a smaller group can actually do work, that it's much harder to do uh, work and drawing of maps when there's a large uh, nine person commission trying to do it. Uh, the cons are that it's required to be done in a smaller group with a permitted, permitted interaction group. So with that, open up for discussion and uh, I, I guess I'll start having been through this twice and been on the tech committee twice. It's something I, you know, we, we, we've talked about now twice in this commission and gotten similar criticism for the reality is I don't see a a good solution to it. I mean, drawing, trying, trying to have these meetings and and in, you know, a larger forum, um, seems like it would be extremely inefficient. Uh, trying to, do, do you give people a certain amount of time to to talk about a certain line before you do it? And we're talking about seventy six different districts that have to be adjusted. Um, so I get it. I totally recognize the the concerns, but um, I think if you look at this practically, how do you actually implement that and get it done um, is, a, is a hard question to answer. And I, you know, I've, I've given this a lot of thought. I, I can't see how it would be a, an efficient process that you know, wouldn't take 12 hours to do a very small amount of work as opposed to when you have a smaller, a smaller group that can bring ideas together and discuss them and, and move on um, quickly. So, and again, you would run into situations where there would be intense debate over, you know, one specific area that could go on for a large, long, extended period of time, and uh, just go back to how do you how do you manage that for for you know for seven eight islands and and uh, seventy six different districts plus the congressional districts. It could be it could be difficult. There's a reason why it's been done this way for the last I don't know fifty years, you know, um, and and hasn't been changed. And I think. Amid the criticism, there hasn't been a, a clear um, suggestion on how we do it better. So, 
I would have a hard time supporting this this suggestion unless there's some an alternate an alternate plan that that makes more sense. Commissioner Kennedy, you have your hand up. Yeah, Commissioner Nanaka. You know, I totally get that, and I totally agree. I was not. Um, I am not sure what Mr. Hicks' plan was, but for me, um, just being a part of it, I I don't. I'm not sharing that everybody should have an opinion. I think that you could continue the four and four, um, but that we would be allowed or the community would be allowed to just watch. No, none of this whole rigmarole before. It's just you guys turn on the computer, you guys do your work, and we have access to watching, you know, just how you guys came up with those answers and questions. And I know there's a lot that goes on, but not that everybody would have input, but the just that the technical committee, even if you just recorded what you guys did, just so people could see that you you actually took into consideration what they said and did the best of your abilities. Like they, you know, it would take out all of the mistrust, I feel like. So definitely my recommendation would not necessarily be that nine of us decide how all that goes, just that the four of us or the four in the future that are not on the actual technical committee just have access to the understanding so that we can communicate maybe to the community, um, you know, give them better, a better understanding, right? Because maybe one of us is available and you guys aren't, et cetera. But by no means am I saying nine people should do the work of the four. I just think that nine should have access to the work of the four or the community as well, if possible, but silent access, no input, just being there. Just wanted to clarify that. I mean, does that make sense at all, Dylan? Like, does that? Yeah, it, it could. I mean, the and I, and I and I go back to right. We got to look at this from both sides of, of the coin. And, and I was, um, after all of the you know when this process ended, somebody had a discussion with me about seeing after seeing all the criticism and you know the. The community input and, and asked you know why what is it that what, what is it that you know I'm trying, I'm trying to articulate this well here where we don't know what everybody's motivations are right we get accused of all kinds of things and we don't respond to it right but you can look at anybody's map that they've drawn and question the motivations behind those maps right and they don't have to explain or provide reasoning or anything and, and no matter what, this is a political process, right? This affects politics, and and there's no way to absolve yourself from accusations that you're being political both ways, commission and public, right? We don't know what the public interest is. Sometimes somebody's maybe they want to benefit certain people in the legislature. We don't know that. We can't, and we're not in a position to make those accusations. So it's unfair either way. And so, I mean, to base the, you know, this type of policy or the way we do business off of mistrust or non-transparency it works both ways i mean the public that submits maps aren't drawing their maps in public and having to explain every step and why they're doing what they're doing so um again just comes back to practicality i mean if you if you want to provide more access i mean you know i can make that can make sense but i just think that um you're never going to get away from that criticism and i don't think this would solve that it's, the criticism will still be there for people who don't like what we do so um I think we're not trying to minimize criticism. I think we're just trying to open the, the process for people to see. I mean, they may still criticize, but at least they'd be criticizing all of us <laughs> or have better understanding, right? And that's a matter of perspective too. This process, I think we've talked about in the past, is probably the most open and transparent process in the whole United States. You know, most, the majority of states, the political party in power draws the maps in the state capitol and has no public hearings and, it, and you get what you get when they're done. So um, again, it's all, a, there's never a perfect process, but it's all a matter of perspective too. You know, and I wanna add to that, Dylan, um, we did make changes people asked and we did look at, and, I, and they may not have changes that everybody liked, but we actually went by numbers and we did not look to see who was just, we were attacking. It was strictly numbers, and um, that's where we're at. We, you know, uh, we made changes, and I'm I'm thinking in Eastern Oahu and downtown Honolulu. We changed that, then, and our growth has been on the west side. I 
and and let's not forget that the, that this law exists you know this exemption to the sun, sunshine law exists for many other bodies and not just ours right we're not the only ones that do this and it exists for a reason because there's work like this that has to get done in many different commissions and so and let's also not forget the, the legislature is not subject to this right so the main lawmaking body that creates all of this stuff is not subject to the sunshine law so um there's no perfect way to implement it i mean it's a good intent but again these things are there for a reason because it becomes very impractical at some point when you um try and eliminate all perceptions of something not to totally being transparent you know it's, not, it's always somebody who's going to say it's not transparent enough so it, it exists the process exists for a reason we're not the first ones to deal with it yeah i mean i i just want to say that i learned a lot through this process and um you know some say suggestions or ideas that i had in in any of the map drawing um i wouldn't want to be labeled somehow that you know that that was what i was stuck on because if I recall correctly, through this process, we changed a lot of things, you know, like the house wraparound. Um, so I wouldn't have wanted someone to say that because I, su um, I supported the wraparound initially that, that I wasn't going to change because of that. And they saw me talk about that in the technical committee, you know, so I, I really think it's, it, it, it was a process. And then you know, we came forth with the maps that we did, the draft maps that we did. Um, the other part where I think people have a feeling, you know, or frustration is in these hearings, people are presenting testimony, but it isn't really dialogue. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's not like we respond back. So we're all sitting here listening and people are thinking, you're not hearing me, but I think as the chair pointed out, we are hearing, we may not necessarily agree. And the, the, the way this process is set up, it's not for us to sit and debate each other, but it's to, to take in the, the testimony. And there's often a lot of written testimony as well. Um, so it's not just the people who speak, but, um, you know, and, and we need to consider all of those things as well as all of the criteria. So um, yeah, it, it's really not an easy solution. And I think um, Mr. Hicks said in his testimony today that prior technical committees meetings were open. And um, I think Commissioner Nonaka, that, that isn't the case, that wasn't the case last time, was it? It was not, no, it was very similar process. And, and I think you bring up a good point. I just, I just, the light bulb went off right, about We're on. The, the, <laughs> the side effects of a meeting like that being open, right? Is having been the subject of many personal attacks in this process, any suggestion I make in an open meeting is gonna be personally attacked by critics, right? So it's gonna incentivize me to say less, not more, right? And so when, I suggest to move this line here. You're going to say, well, it's because it's in my personal interest and I, or I have some political connection. And that's, you know, that's the, that's, that's what's going to come out of that from the people who are, are going to have criticism, you know, whether or not it's a good decision or a bad decision, everybody agrees with it. It almost, it, it can have a counter effect where you're going to have less transparency, not more, because you're going to have these meetings and nobody's going to want to say anything because they're going to be questioned. Your motives are going to be questioned. So again, it goes back to the practical efficiency of the process. Lots of discussions took place. A lot of the debates took place. Concessions were made, right, with different opinions. And people said, OK, we're going to, I, I, you know, I don't totally agree with that, but we'll do that because there's another effect somewhere else that makes sense. And um, I think you would have less of those discussions and less interaction amongst the commissioners and the public if, if every single word that we said is going to be scrutinized and criticized yeah. for, you know, some other, for some other motivation that, Someone ha someone is suspect of so something to, something to consider. Uh, 
Thanks. Any further discussion? Yeah. Commissioner sure. Rappler. Uh, I'd like to say I, I would not, as, as a tech committee representative, I would not be opposed to having uh, a video of our, our proceedings. I, I, like you said, we didn't have any secrets. It wasn't like we were, you know, not taking into account what was happening because there, we had a lot of discussion amongst ourselves to ensure that we were uh, reviewing and uh, considering all of the previous inputs every time we met from day one. Uh, and the second thing I'd like to say on this is, uh, while the neighbor islands did a fairly good job, in my opinion, of, of giving us input and feedback, the Oahu Advisory Group did not do uh, very much. Uh, you know, I applaud Commissioner Kennedy because she did try to get that moving. But when they did finally become a functional uh, group, we were pretty much done with the process. And I'm not trying to minimize that, but uh, if, if there's a way we can make it so that they get involved earlier in the process, I think their, their input, and, and that is really the conduit for the community to get their, their uh, stuff to the table is because there is a commissioner on each, assigned to each group. Okay, so for this permitted interaction group one, I, I'm not 100% sure what we should say here. Um, if if uh, somebody wants to make a motion, because I, I'm I, I don't even know how to take a crack at crafting something, uh, but if somebody wants to make a motion uh, regarding how we increase transparency among the permitted permitted interaction group, you can take a crack and see if that'll get second and can win approval to make it into our recommendations. Let me try, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, Go, Randy. How about, we, how about we make a recommendation that if the permitted interaction group is uh, still uh, the method that the commission, the future commission decides to go that uh, the interactions be uh, videotaped and be available to the public. I second that. Then that way they can see what's going on, but it, they don't necessarily interfere with the proceedings. And, you know, uh, obviously, whatever they see, they're going to report on if they don't like what they see. They're going to do yeah. that anyway. <laughs> so. I, I mean, I, yeah, I just want to, I just want to um, just think this through a little bit, because 10 years from now, the meetings could be in person. They could be uh, like this in video. They could be on telephones. They could be like... I, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what the construct will be of the permitted interaction group meetings in ten years. So, um, if we're, do we want to say that maybe there'll be minutes or or, or with some type of some type of um, uh, record? I, I don't know. To say we videotape would might be challenging. If if the if the meetings are in person, I I don't know what what good a videotape would do. Honestly, I mean, like if you take four people in a room with a whiteboard trying to draw maps and like putting things up. D Dylan, I don't know, 10 years ago when you did this, uh, this exercise, could you see a functional way where something meaningful could be videotaped that somebody could watch and like understand what was going on? Or... You, you, it, it, there would have to be a production. I mean, you have to mic everybody up so there would be good audio. You'd have to also have the screen record happening at the same time. Um, I mean, anything could be done with money, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't be just a simplistic, you know, you turn a, you turn a camera on the corner of the room and just and videotape the process. I mean, anybody who's worked in that kind of realm, if you look at the amount of equipment that the state legislature has had to put into the committee rooms to, to broadcast on Zoom, it's, it's a significant amount of, um, of stuff. And, and there's some cost involved with that. I think at the end of the day, you know, whatever we, we whatever recommendation in this regarding in regards to this, um, 
probably isn't going to be something that changes in law. It would be something that the that the future reapportionment commission would just have to um, look at and potentially vote on to implement into their own rules. So, um, you know, again, and they wouldn't be bound by it. So yeah, these are just recommendations, right? Yeah. So maybe Rep, uh, Commissioner Nishimura um, change we, it to a record, or 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 just modify it to like increase transparency, like some that the, we recommend that the the future commission look at ways to make uh, the proceedings of the permitted interaction group more transparent, something and, like that. And, and one other thing to take it, I mean, like perspective wise from the last time, I found it very helpful the last time when we actually did public hearings, like we went out to the communities and sat, I mean, there wasn't as much participation from the commissioners because it was impractical to get nine, you know, we saw, we saw maximum participation this year because it was Zoom and it's easy, you just go in your office and you open the, the computer. Last time we had to fly to Molokai, we had to fly to Kauai, you know, I mean, we, we, we went to all these places, but there was a lot more interaction amongst the community at those public hearings because we were actually there and you could present and then and then have some back and forth with the community members that 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 um, came. So part of the, part of the process that makes this non-transparent or non-interactive is the Sunshine Law, right? Like people got to understand that again. There's there's consequences to when you do stuff like this, where you have this rigid situation where you got to have three minutes and testifiers and all this stuff. And so um, the that and it, like you said, Jared. Could be different we could be back to normal 10 years from now and we actually do have that process where we go out i can tell you i had plenty of personal interactions with the community after the commission meetings right it wasn't necessarily during the commission meeting during the formal testimony but after the commit before after the commission started the the people that were there would be there and we could have personal myself and and, and bart dame had many lively discussions 10 years ago um you know off off outside of the meeting and those things can happen when you're in person and that's just one of the constraints we had this year is not being able to do this in person. So we shouldn't base our, you know, total view of this based on this is, I think, an anomaly process and year, not not the norm. It's normally not like this. Yeah. Well, yeah, and based on that explanation, I feel like I would withdraw my support then, because at the end of the day, it could just be this COVID thing that's created this problem, right? It's added, it, it's added a layer of, of disconnect for sure. Right. Yeah. And I don't know, Commissioner Nishimura, I don't know if I would draw my motion. <laughs> no problem. Um, does, and, does anybody want to make any other kind of motion? Do you want to um, amend I it? Just thought, you know, based on that discussion, I was at a house in Waimanalo this weekend talking about this whole process. And there were a lot of people that were like, we didn't even know this was going on. So is any kind of recommendation that we could make that they market it, like maybe put an ad in the paper, put it, you know, the newspapers, do some, whatever it is to let the entire state know that this process is happening. Because I feel like there's people that are politically involved that are very aware. I mean, when I was asked to be on this commission, I didn't even know what reapportionment was. And I am embarrassed to admit that, but I had no understanding of what that actually meant. So I feel like if there's a way, an opportunity to, to, to educate the community that it's coming, that it's happening and what it is, um, it might be a little bit more of a positive experience for everyone because there's a lot of people that didn't even know this was going on, right? So maybe we should communicate to the actual entire community. That way, Dylan, you can have those meetings with, you know, invite three or four neighborhood boards to one location and, you know, let them share their thoughts and then they'll be talking to you guys about what was happening during, you know, I mean, yeah, I think that's amazing, but we need to tell the people that it's coming so that they're aware and that they can participate. Because you I might find a lot more support out there, right? I think that was a consequence of COVID also because um, of a bad memory, but I'm pretty sure 10 years ago, I'm, I can think of the Rotary Club, League of Women Voters, uh, UH Hilo Student Association, there was a bunch of organizations that would invite us to come and speak, you know, individual commissioners, not necessarily a meeting, but there was a lot more community interaction because there were actually gatherings and you could go at, to, to those things. So, um, that, you know, that's another thing if we're back in normal times, I think would be, the, you would have more community involvement just because there would be that natural, those natural gatherings of people that are interested. And that wasn't really the case this year. But yeah. League of Women Voters did do a, did do a, um, uh, on the big island here did do a, a zoom forum this year but that was the only time you know I, I attended anything that that um i'm like that where there was a lot more 10 years ago does any of that last discussion want to translate into a motion for something we put in our recommendations about public 
awareness and yeah, I mean, I would like to make a motion that they do, they have a planned marketing program to allow the state to know that this is about to happen. Let's, uh, <laughs> my, my, only, my, only, my only comment on that is, that's the problem with government across the board is lack of participation, not just this process. So. I mean, you know, less than half of our population votes in our elections. So, um, you know, I don't know if any any type of, I mean, we're in the newspaper every week this this past six months. I mean, there was plenty of there was plenty of of attention and and I think information out there. Um, so I don't know if spending money out of a marketing campaign is going to make a, a a big difference in a very obscure. And again, this is a process that um, I, you know. A lot of people doesn't know exists, but don't even care either, right? I mean, most people don't care where their house district line is; they just vote for the person that's in it. So, um, that's just my and I'm, that's just my experience amongst the normal people I hang out with on a day to day basis. I mean, I tell them they're like, "What are you doing? What are you, what are you not Zoom meeting for three hours? I have no idea what I was doing, and, and don't care, right?" So, um, that's just the reality of most most folks. Sure. Yeah, how about we have a motion to have the next commission? enhance um, participation and transparency. Great, perfect. Not enough. I like that. Is there, is there a second to- I second. Up? Okay, any further discussion on that? I know Scott's happy with that because he doesn't have to take marketing out of his budget to like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can invite all the neighborhood boards to participate. We can just shoot a blanket email. I'll do it for free. Find me in 10 years, right? We'll email all the neighborhood boards and invite them to meetings or whatever. Careful what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what I've heard, a uh, motion by Commissioner Nishimura and second by Commissioner Kennedy is a recommendation to encourage the next commission to look at ways to improve uh, public participation and transparency. And um, any further discussion? Otherwise, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so we have our four additional recommendations that we're going to put into the report. I, I just wanna check, David, are you on still? Do you, do you see David? Dave, which one? David Rosenbaum. I'm still sorry. here. Okay, yeah, great. Do you, do you feel like you uh, you got uh, enough on the four things? I think Scott also has the motions recorded so that you can incorporate those four recommendations into the draft report. Absolutely. If not, we have the video. Okay, terrific, terrific, thank you. In that case, I'll entertain a motion for our commission to adopt the, the draft report with the addition of the recommendations uh, to constitute a final report to the legislature. I so move, Chair. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, so motion by Commissioner Ono and second by Commissioner Nakota. Um, for this one, Mr. Secretary, will you take a roll vote, please? Is Commissioner Tip Chase. Aye. Commissioner Chun. Excuse Commissioner Kennedy. Aye. Commissioner Koto. Aye. Commissioner Nishimura. Aye. Commissioner Nonaka. Aye. Commissioner Ono. Aye. Commissioner Rathbone. Aye. Chair Maguishi. Aye. Chair, the motion carries. Thank you. Uh, before we adjourn, I just want to uh, say to first, all of the staff, Office of Election staff, uh, huge mahalo. And thank you so much for your dedication, your professionalism, your expertise. Um, I, I'm sure I speak for all the commission members when I say that we just really appreciate all you did and definitely could not have done it without you. So um, to the you know, Scott, to all of your permanent staff and also to the special reapportionment staff uh, under David that was here, you know, mahalo. And then second, I wanna to say to all the commissioners, it was really an honor and a pleasure to serve with all of you. 
you know, I, I think we barely knew each other before. Maybe I think I knew one or two of you prior to this. Uh, but I feel like we're all brothers and sisters now. We all work together on this. And, uh, and it was an honor and truly uh, a pleasure. And thank you very, very much for everything that you did in service to our community. Um, and with that, yeah. And with that, uh, if there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Wait, you guys want to hang out more? <laughs> <Didn't we? laughs> Before you got done? All right, I heard a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All so in favor? Second, yeah. Was the second conversation tomorrow? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned. Mahalo, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you.